pitched. All right, we're going to start chapter three, and I got my assistant here, Chris. Ready, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Here's chapter three, and it's on uh, section three one's on inverse functions. And if f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x, then f and g are inverses of each other. That's just the definition that you need to know. And so we need to check to see if f of x, here's an example, uh, if f of x equals 5x plus 2, and if g of x equals x minus 2 over 5, let's check to see if these two things are inverses of each other. Well, they're inverses if f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x. So let's go ahead and check and see if f of g of x equals x. Now to get f of g of x, I got to substitute the g of x function in for x on this function. Okay, I'm substituting this right here in for x. So that would be 5 times this stuff, x, which is this x minus 2 over 5, plus 2. And that's what I have right here, 5 times x minus 2 over 5 plus 2, because I substituted this stuff in for x. Now all I need to do is simplify this and see if we get x. If we get x, then we're halfway there. Now, in simplifying this, I got 5 over 5, and what happens to these 5s then? They, um, they cross out. That's right. So they divide out to 1, and I'm left with x minus 2 plus 2, and minus 2 plus 2 is 0, right? Yeah. So I'm just left with? X. X, right. Now we've got to check it the other way. Let's do g of f of x. Okay, g of f of x means put the f of x function, this junk right here, everywhere there's an x over here. You understand that, Chris? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this 5x plus 2 right there where the x is. And what would I get? Well, I would get 5x plus 2 minus 2 over 5, and that's what I have right there. And what happens to this plus 2 and minus 2? They turn into nothing. Right. Zero. They add up to 0. So that just leaves me 5x over 5. And what happens to the 5s again? They cancel out. Right. So we're just simplified to x. So f of g of x and g of f of x both equaled x, right? Yeah. So therefore, these two functions are what of each other? Inverse functions. You got it. Okay, let's see what this does uh, in terms of a table here. So on, uh, we found out just a second ago that these two functions are inverses of each other. Let's see what that means. Okay, if I substitute any number in for x, and I just picked easy numbers or nice easy numbers to deal with, if I put, let's say, 0 in for x on the g function, if I put 0 in here, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and I get minus 2 fifths. Now, if I substitute minus 2 fifths in here, well, minus 2 fifths times 5 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 is what? Um, 0. Right. Let's do one more and make sure you see what's going on. Let's substitute 2 in for x. If I substitute 2 in for x on the g function, I would get 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. Now, substitute 0 in for x here, and what do you get? 2. Two. So in other words, the f of the f function does what to the g function? Cancels it out. Right. It brings you back to what you started off with. The g function takes you someplace to a, to a, a number, like it takes seven. If you substitute seven in, you get one. And then the g function will take whatever answer you had and bring it back to what you started with. You understand that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's true if we do it here, we did the g of x function first, and then the f brings you back to what you started with. Well, here, if we do the f function first, the g is going to bring you back to what you started out with. So let's, here's one. If I put 0 in for x, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And actually, I'm put, sorry, st substituting into the f function here. Substitute 0 in for x on this, and I get 5. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. Now substitute the 2 into the g function, and 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 over 5 is 0. What do you think? You understand that, okay? Yeah. The 1 brings you back to where you started with. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, it's hard to get an idea what inverse functions do until you maybe say it with words here. So here's my two functions that ended up being inverses of each other. So let's say in words what each function does. Okay, the f of x function takes a number, multiplies it by 5, and then adds 2. What does the g of x function do there, Christopher? Uh, it takes the x, subtracts it by 2, then divides it by 5. Now, the opposite of multiplying, multiplying by 5 is what? Subtracting by, dividing by 5. Right. And the opposite of adding 2 is what? Subtracting 2. Now, not only does this g function do the opposite things of what the f of x function does, but it does it in the opposite order. This one, the first on the f function, the first thing you do is multiply by 5. 
and then you add 2. The second step is add 2. First step, multiply by 5. Second step, add 2. What's the first step on this one? I'm taking the x and subtracting by 2. So you subtract first. Here we added second. And then with the opposite of multiplication is division, and we multiplied first. Here we divide what? Second. Second. So you don't just do the opposite thing. You do the opposite thing in the opposite order. Like, for example, Christopher, let's say that we, um, here's a function. Put on your socks and shoes. What would be the inverse of that function? Take off your shoes and socks? You got it right. Take off your shoes and socks. You don't take off your socks and shoes. Why? Because that's hard. impossible, right? You have to take off your shoes before you take off your socks. That's the opposite order. You put on your socks and shoes, then you put take off your shoes and socks. So you have to do it in the opposite order. Let's see what else we got here. Um, okay, here's a problem. See if you can answer this one, Christopher. It says if we had a function that first divided a number by six, then added two to that, what would be the inverse of that? Any idea? Um. Subtracting, taking the number, subtracting by 2, and dividing, at multiplying by 6. Right. It's the opposite thing in the opposite order. So um, if we first divided by 6 and then added 2, then the opposite is subtract 2 and multiply by 6. And these would be the two functions. Here's the original function, divide by 6 and add 2. And here's the other function, subtract 2 and then multiply that by 6. If you would find f of g of x, what do you think you would get, Christopher? if we did f of g of x on this? Um, I don't know. x. And what do you think you would get if you get g of f of x? x. You got it. Because these two functions are inverse functions, that means that when you, when you composite them together, substitute one into the other, you're going to simplify and get you x every time. And we'll stop it right there, and we'll pick up with this section on the next video.